Hello everyone and welcome back after a long wait. We are back today with the Sony Ericsson Xperia Pro and its video review. Hope you guys will enjoy this device. It's recently been launched on Fido with um, um, a two-year contract. It's about $25 on $50 or something like that. An off-contract is $350. Very new phone and um, the novelty factor of course with the Xperia Pro is the full QWERTY slide-out keyboard. Um, we will cover the exterior of the phone just now. So let's start. On the front of the device you will find a fingerprint smudged. Um, 3.7 liter um, TFT LCD touchscreen with um, 480 by 854 WFVGA resolution. Um, you also have um, front facing camera and three dedicated back home and preferences um, keys in front along with the loudspeaker grill. On the right side we have the two-stage camera button as well as the micro HDMI connector port. Um, on the left you have the lock button and 3.5 millimeter headset jack. On top you have the micro USB connector, standard micro USB connector. Bottom is the lanyard. Um, and on the back you have an 8 megapixel camera with LED flash along with a secondary camera used for active noise cancellation and also for video recording when you're using that um, microphone and also the loudspeaker grills over here. So, um, general feel of the phone is very good. It's plastic, it's made of plastic. There is although a high uh, as a chrome accent that runs around the phone. It's very good looking in my opinion. It's very classy but um, not too outlandish. Fits great in the hand. There is a uh, indent, there's like a curve yeah, a contour curve on the inside, um, opposite sort of to the Nexus S where it has it on the front, this has it on the back, and it actually makes the phone feel fit very good in your hand, um, and um, especially when you're using the full QWERTY keyboard, the two thicker areas are right where you hold it, so the middle, and it also makes it feel thinner. It's also one of the thinnest, one of the thinnest um, core, full QWERTY devices, it's only 13.5 millimeters. It's very, very thin and never have I felt that it was a thick device that I was holding. So, when you slide it open, you are greeted to a beautiful full QWERTY keyboard. Um, the keys are very spacious, well laid out, um, lots of space and very distinct cl click on the keys. It's quite um, an enjoyable experience typing on these keys um, and I can even do it without looking at the keyboard. I'm just looking at it through the camera screen. Okay, this is quite the keyboard. I just put an extra Q there. So, there's that. Um, I really like the keyboard and if you guys are uh, um, heavy users of the keyboard, this is an excellent keyboard to get. There's just one niggle with it and I'll just show you guys quickly in the messaging application. Um, the symbols key and the language key don't really work here. I don't know why, but they just don't. Anyway, but that's not a problem because, you know, well, if you put a lot of symbols, I guess it's a problem. But otherwise, for me, it wasn't a big deal. Um, like reading my conversation with Wendy. Anyway, um, so I think we've covered the exterior properly. It's not heavy, but it's not light either. You definitely have some heft to it, but it's a good kind of heft. You know, it feels quality. Um, and it's this feel of quality and even though it's all plastic construction it is very sturdy. Oh, um, getting into the back cover it's kind of weird because there's no actual opening on anywhere. The only way I've found to open it is to by opening the micro HDMI port like that and frying frying it open from here. I don't know, maybe it's made to be opened that way but it just feels weird to me. The back cover is sturdier than I'm used to but not as sturdy as I'd like it to be. And to the back, you're greeted with the SIM card slot, 1500 milliamp battery, as well as the micro SD card slot. It came preloaded with from Fido with an 8 gigabyte micro SD card slot card. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case with other markets though. You also, sorry, I forgot about this. You also have the, your volume up and down buttons on the right side. Okay, so let's get into the actual phone itself now. Um, so, the Sony Ericsson Timescape um, interface is present here, the skinning of the 2.34 um, Android 
um, 2.34 was actually received, received um, sorry, announced recently. It was 2.33 all the way up to now, but a couple days ago they announced 2.34. So it's the latest one now. It runs the latest Android on a 1 gigahertz, 512 megabyte RAM. Um, so the specs are decent, but they're not the newest. So you can tell it's a single core processor and we're starting to get dual core devices now. So let's see if it actually can keep up in terms of performance with um, the average user. So the lock sequence is like this, and you're greeted with the Timescape user interface. It has five, it comes with five home screens. Of course, you can always install your own launcher and customize it to your own meaning. The dock on the bottom holds five items, with the, one of them being your menu. Your menu, like on their devices that go up and down, this goes left and right, just like the iPhone's um, window home screen panes. Um, there are customizable as you'd like them to. You can delete applications right from here if you've downloaded them, so that's a good feature. You don't have to go into the settings. Um, and also you can sort them by different methods, so that's really good too. Um, back into the home screen. You also have um, proprietary widgets for turning off and on sound or brightness up and down quickly, which is really good. You don't have to dig into settings again. Um, as well, you have your Timescape widget, which has now become a widget. It used to be on the Xperia X10. It used to be a full application. Now it's a widget. Um, and you can see your latest status updates or um, social networking. Come, everything basically combined. If you guys, if I launch the actual, oh, this is a message. So, so if I actually um, go into the actual thing by that button, um, it brings me overall everything, Twitter, um, Moxie Pro, which is their own thing. I actually haven't used it. I didn't bother. Um, texts, Facebook, calls, and again, the whole thing overall, everything combined. So that's a really, I really, as I mentioned in the X10 video, I really like this. Is On this, it's even smoother and much more usable and less laggy. So I really like the, um, that, and it keeps up with performance-wise. Sometimes the pictures are slower to load, um, but that is to be expected, of course, because they're pictures. But yeah, you can see that it's quite smooth, very, very good in terms of that. So there's that. Um, so it's become a widget with access to the thing now. You can update your Facebook and Twitter directly from here, um, which is good. And also, um, you have a little bit of mediascape over here. And you have a 3D scroll of your recent pictures and videos that you've taken on your camera, as well as a music control widget. Um, you can go to the next song, play them, pause. I love this song. And also you have music, photos, and videos, media shortcuts right there as well. So that's good too. There's other proprietary applications. Again, applica um, applications and widgets aren't a big deal because Android has market, has a wealth of these. So it's quite good. So you have your standard notification bar as well. As you can see, the icons are slightly different from gingerbread screen battery there. Um, so that's about it software-wise. Um, messaging, as you saw, is showing you threads. And other things are common with other Android devices, so there's no point in delving into them. You guys know how Android works by now and how it runs. Um, so let's go into something that is more unique to this phone, the camera quality. So, the camera, as I mentioned, is 8 megapixels, and it has um, autofocus, and it's a backlit CMOS sensor, and it takes excellent, excellent pictures. So, and videos as well, actually. So, and the flash is LED, but it's um, actually quite bright. So, I know, I don't know, maybe it could be sufficient. I haven't had any situations where I had to use it, though. So, let's go into um, the media gallery. Um, the gallery app is your standard um, Android gallery app. You can, it has the 3D effects, scroll, etc. Um, so in the camera album, we can take a look at one of the pictures I took yesterday at Toronto International um, Oscar Festival. Um, so as you can see, pinch and zoom is quite smooth. And photo quality is absolutely great. There's Edmund, these are actually downsized pictures on the in the, from the gallery app once you put them on the computer they show um, amazing quality and clarity um, same thing with the 720p videos that this um, phone is capable of taking um, it takes a 720p video at 20 frames per second Let's turn off the... 
so it takes 30 frames um, per second and has continuous autofocus as well. It takes um, it has a really good resolve the amount of resolve detail and color saturation. I would say it's quite better than the iPhone 4 camera in terms of its video recording capabilities. So props to this device, even though it's um, slightly more work oriented with the full QWERTY keyboard and everything, um, it still has good multimedia capabilities. So other than this. The web browsing experience, let's check out the browser um, right there. Go to, um, where do I want to go to? Let's go to my website for the heck of it. So there it is. Um, I'm going off the Wi Fi network. It's quite fast to load. Um, pages scroll smoothly. Pages, actually, this is a mobile version. If I go to the, no, web version, if I go to the web version, um, you guys will see that pages are quick to load. Um, they render properly. It is flash capable, and flash doesn't run as smoothly, but it runs. You know, you don't want it if you're not playing 720p videos in the browser. It'll be fine. Um, and pinch to zoom gestures are very smooth. Actually, it started a bit now, but it feels good when you're using it. Scrolling is quite um, smooth, and frame rates don't drop as much. So. Um, even though it's running older generation processor, well, not older generation, but not as not like let's just say not dual core and everything. Even though it's running those, it's quite powerful and it still manages to keep up perfectly. So, in summary, I'd like to say there isn't anything else that I'd really like to cover. Everything else is standard Android devices, the applications, everything. Although it does come with, I didn't mention this, it comes with Office Pro. Um, pre-installed being a business oriented device um, with the keyboard um, and that's a good feature it allows you to edit um, work with soft word PowerPoint Excel and documents also view PDFs so that's good and other than these it's not there's not really much more to mention it has your standard Android affair um, with excellent picture capabilities and an excellent keyboard with a very affordable price tag at $350 off contract from Fido, which I find to be extremely attractive and very well priced for um, a device with such capabilities. And um, to wrap things up, let's talk about battery life. I was, I guess, a little bit hopeful for a very good battery life, hoping to get a day and a half or two, um, uh, two days of work out of this handset, but Android phones are known for being a little bit power hungry, um, especially all the background applications they constantly run. So with medium to heavy usage, I got around a full day. I got a full day um, use out of the battery. Sometimes a little bit less than a full day. So like around 8 p.m. or 7 p.m., it would run to 10 percent. Or um, so I'd have to charge it then. But uh, it's still quite good considering I'm a heavy user. If you're a lighter user, you'll definitely see a day or day and a half out of this device with the 1500 milliamp battery. So that's it for the review of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Pro for today. If you guys have any questions about the device, please feel free to drop me a comment below. I usually reply quite um, frequently to the comments that I receive and I try to keep people um, happy. And uh, that's it for now. Hopefully I'll be back soon with more devices and more videos. See you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed.